In this video, I'll be going over some lesser known but crazy awesome exercises that you can try with your monkey feet if you want to bulletproof your hips or if you just need a little bit more training variety when using this nifty little device. So let's get to it. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. All right, the monkey feet. If you have one of these and you use it, you know how challenging and effective it can be for strengthening some of your hip muscles and your leg muscles. I love this thing. I've been using mine on myself quite a bit, as well as a lot of the patients I treat in rehab in the clinic. Can't say enough good things about this nifty little device. So the exercises that I'm briefly presenting here in this video, if they work for you, take them, run with them, modify them, tweak them, make them your own because you want them to be as effective and appropriate for you as possible. If they don't work for you, just leave them, forget about them and move on. So if you have one of these monkey feet, you're likely very familiar with the traditional, more common, but very important and very awesome exercises like your standing hip flexion, your standing hamstring curls, your seated knee extensions, your knee extensions while laying on your back, or what we call supine knee extensions, or laying on your stomach doing hamstring curls, which we call prone hamstring curls. Exercises like those, super great, keep doing them, they're awesome. But sometimes it's just good to have a little bit more variety and some new challenges to try with equipment. So that's what we're getting into right now. So exercise number one, this is kind of like a traditional eagle movement that it's sometimes called. I have no idea why it's called an eagle, but hey, we're just gonna take it and run with it. This is what I call a modified eagle where we're just basically gonna start with your leg up in the air with your monkey feet strapped up to it. You're gonna drop that leg across your body down at about a 45 degree angle drop nice and slow, and then slowly return to that starting position and repeat for as many repetitions as you need. Now, this is a very challenging exercise, so you will not need a lot of weight here. I was using five pounds and that was plenty for me. So start light and scale up from there. And the big thing to be aware of on this movement is it's probably best to drop the leg down to around a 45 degree angle or maybe even a bit less. When you have weight on your foot and you're dropping at around a 90 degree angle, it might not be a bad thing for you. I can't say, I don't know who you are, but generally speaking, you'll start to put some torque onto the lower back and even the mid back a bit. And it just might be a bit too much. You might want to avoid that. I find that 45 degrees works perfectly. It's a good challenge, but it's still really comfortable on the back without kind of torquing it or twisting it excessively. But again, play around with it, find out what works best for you, take it and run with it and have fun and feel the burn. Now, as a bonus, if you do want some spinal mobility out of this and you wanna make it a bit more appropriate, still drop your leg down to about a 45 degree angle, but then take your back arm, so the arm that's on the same side of your monkey feet leg, and just kind of pin that arm to the ground or keep your shoulder on the ground. And as you kind of gently, slowly lower, you'll kind of put a little bit of rotation to that spine, a lot kind of in through the area that we call the TL junction or the thoracolumbar junction. And you might get a nice little bit of mobilization there while you actually do this exercise. Now for the next exercise here, we are going to do what we call a prone internal and external rotation. Now prone just means laying on your stomach and then internal and external refer to the directions that we're rotating the thigh bone. This is gonna be a great exercise to, again, challenge some of the rotating hip muscles, so the muscles that help to rotate the hip. And this one, it can also be a great stretch as well if you do it appropriately. And you'll likely notice in this video that some of these exercises are really designed to break you out of what we call the sagittal plane of movement. The sagittal plane just refers to, in this case, the forwards and backwards direction that the leg moves. Now we're putting different planes of movement in here. And what that does is that gives you different challenges. It challenges different muscles and it challenges them in different ways. So with this prone internal and external rotation, all you need to do is lay on your stomach and then with your knee bent to 90 degrees, let the foot drop outside and then pull it back up and then drop it to the inside. Go as far as you can as feels comfortable, but make sure when you do this that you're not letting your hips roll and your spine roll side to side. You want to isolate as much movement into the hip joint so the movement's really coming from the ball and socket joint so that when the muscles have to contract to pull you back out of that position back to the top, that you really make a more intense contraction by isolating the movement to those muscles. Also, I did find that with the dumbbells I use that it, they slide around a little bit in the monkey feet but it's not bad and it almost creates a new challenge because that weight shifting around a little bit kind of just gives you a little bit more of a dynamic challenge to fight against. And for the next exercise, we are going to take the very traditional and very well known, but very effective exercise, the bird dog, and we're gonna kick it up a notch by having a monkey feet strapped to one of your legs. So you're likely familiar with the bird dog. It's an amazing exercise that has a lot of great benefits in terms of core strength and control, as well as making sure we get deep spinal activation and even some leg strengthening out of it. 
But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a traditional kind of glute kickback that a lot of people do with the monkey feet. And we're gonna add that core component, that movement motor control component, where we get anti-rotational strengthening around the core while we do this. So with the traditional bird dog, if we look at the lower half of the body during the movement, the glute max and the hamstrings have to work as a team to produce that leg straightening movement. And we're gonna kick that challenge up even more by strapping a monkey feet to one of the legs. Now, a lot of people are very familiar with the monkey feet exercise of what we call like a glute kickback, where you're just pushing the leg straight backwards. And again, that's what we're doing here with the bird dog. But now we're gonna take the upper body component of extending the opposite arm straight outwards so that we get what we call a bigger anti-rotational challenge where the core is having to work to produce controlled stability while the movement is being executed. So you won't need much weight for this movement if you're doing it in a slow and controlled manner. So as you push the arm and leg away from one another, you really wanna make sure that again, you are fighting that rotation that wants to happen throughout your core or midsection. And all while you're doing that, you're gonna feel your glute max and hamstrings really have to light up to hold your leg in that kind of extended position. And then you slowly bring everything back to the starting position and you repeat. Moving on, we next have the single leg Romanian deadlift, often just abbreviated to the single leg RDL. This is a great exercise that is actually working both legs at the exact same time. So as you do this movement, the glute max is gonna have to work on each leg as well as the hamstrings and other hip muscles as well. When you do this, you'll likely feel an even challenge on both legs, so don't think that you're just working one leg here. The key with this exercise is to do what we call a hip hinge. Now, a hip hinge just refers to movement being produced only at the hips without any movement coming from the lower back. You don't want to round your lower back here. You want to keep it as motionless as possible in a very neutral position, and then you are just kind of tipping your upper body forwards while your weighted leg is going to swing backwards, everything moving in unison, and then slowly return to the starting position. Again, the slower you go, the more you're gonna feel it. This is a great exercise, but if you're finding that you just can't quite balance yourself on that single leg, you can opt to use a dowel or some other type of device that gives you a little bit more balance. And then depending on how much extra support you need, you can try having a single finger on top of the support surface so that you're getting a little bit of help with balance, but not a lot. You can try putting your palm on the top if you need a bit more, or if you really need a lot of support, just kind of grab the stick or really give some hefty weight through your hand to whatever object is helping you to stabilize so that you can still do this movement in a controlled fashion. Again, as you do this, don't let your lower back round and don't let your hips rotate or open up. You want to keep your upper body facing straight forward towards the ground just to really challenge the muscles a bit more effectively. The next exercise that we're going to be doing is what we call a fire hydrant. Now, fire hydrants are traditionally done without any extra weight, where you're just lifting the leg out to the side like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. It's really effective exercise for targeting some of the muscles that work around the hip and to control the hip. And we're just gonna kick it up a notch by strapping some weight onto the foot that we're lifting. Now, the key here, again, is to try and produce all of the movement from the hip without bringing other muscles or other movements into the picture. So when you lift the leg, lift as far as you can while only producing movement from that ball and socket joint of the hip. If you start to lift the hip higher and the hips open up or the spine rotates, it's not bad. You'll still get a challenge, but we're just not going to be isolating or driving as much challenge to those specific hip muscles. So you'll notice that if you're moving only from the hip joint itself, that it is a smaller range of motion, but that is not a bad thing. In this case, it means that we're just picking on a couple of key muscles a bit more. So don't think that less range of motion is necessarily a bad thing. It's not harmful if you produce extra movement throughout your body elsewhere. You just likely might find that you don't feel as much of a challenge coming from the hip. And the last exercise we're going to do here, this is one of my personal favorite exercises. And so I always save my favorites until the end. We are going to take an exercise that's called a fire kick and we are going to kick it up a notch with a monkey feet attached. So the traditional fire kick works by having the outside leg hooked up to a band. And then from there, you drive the knee upwards and then push the leg out and slowly bring it back underneath you, gently scraping the surface that you're standing on before you bring the knee up and then you repeat the movement again. Now with this exercise, both hips work like crazy at the same time. So don't think that it's just the leg that's moving that's getting the challenge. So that's the traditional fire kick. Again, that's enough of a challenge on its own but we can do this with a monkey feet if we so want to really have an extra challenge on top of it. Now we can do the fire kick with the monkey feet strapped to the leg without the band. That is still a great challenge and it's still the same movement. You just wanna have all of your weight on your stance leg, lift your knee up, 
push your foot out and slowly bring it underneath you. Gently graze the surface underneath you and then lift the knee up and repeat. But if you really want to kick it up a notch, you're going to do that movement with a band around your foot. The key here is as you produce the movement, you got to go as slow as you can and you can't let that band pull you back inwards. So your leg that you're moving cannot cross the midline of your body. Keep it straight in front of you. Your whole body is going to be working to resist rotation. Your whole body, especially through your hips, are really going to just be fighting for control, especially when you do it slow and controlled. And as well, if you need a little bit more balance, you can use a dowel or a stick or a surface of some type to give you a little bit more support because you want to have as much control as you can when you do this movement. So if you like any of those exercises and you want to stay up to speed with what I'm doing on this channel, feel free to subscribe so that you're not missing any of the content that I'm putting out. Again, if you found this video useful, helpful, or informative in any sort of way, feel free to hit the like button. That would mean a lot to me. So everyone, keep looking after yourselves, keep looking after one another, keep making great things happen, and I will see you in the next video.